guys, it's your friendly neighborhood teenage cripple here. My name is Tara and I've been a paraplegic uh, for about eight months now. Um, so to clarify, paraplegics have problems peeing by themselves and pooping by themselves um, and I'm a complete T11 and T12 um, as of right now. So I definitely have a bowel program um, which actually consists of the peristine system. And as of my own personal history with GI problems, even before my accident I had some GI problems such as frequent stomach aches and nausea and I was also constantly constipated. Um, so I would probably poop like once in like 10 days, um, so it was pretty bad. So now I use the Peristine system and I also use laxatives. But before I started using the Peristine, I was actually doing the manual evacuation route, which a lot of doctors put paraplegics um, on manual evacuation bowel programs to start with, but it really wasn't working for me. I still had a lot of problems with um, keeping clean and then I also had some bleeding down there um, when I would do it, so you're supposed to use a glove and a lot of lube to basically just go up there yourself and do this type of motion, but I would actually have a lot of bleeding afterwards, and sometimes I still have some bleeding with the parasite, but it's not nearly as much. And a lot of people, including myself, had questions and I guess doubts if the parasite would actually be covered by insurance because it's not a very common thing. Um, I know people with spinal cord injuries use it and, and people with spina bifida and some other um, GI poop problems. But I have TRICARE Prime as my primary insurance because my dad was in the army and then I also qualified for Medicaid um, through a waiver because I'm medically needy. So even though my family makes too much to qualify for Medicaid, um, I have Medicaid through the waiver and my Peristine is completely free. And basically the Peristine is kind of like a fancy enema. The little blue symbol on the pumping system is what you set it to when you want to inflate the balloon, and the green symbol is what you set it to when you want to deflate the balloon, and the little teardrop or water drop is what you set it to when you want to put water in, um, whether it be like inside you or into the little pouch to lubricate the catheter. And then once you're all done, you can set it to the orange symbol so that the water can actually drain out of the tubes because that can cause problems if you just leave the water in and that's no good. So basically my doctor told me to fill up an entire capful of Miralax into the Peristine bag itself and then I put some water into the bag just enough to be able to dissolve the Miralax and then I kind of shake it up to help it and also if you use warmer water it tends to go a little quicker and then after it's dissolved I continue to fill the bag all the way up even if you're not going to use the 1000 milliliters it works better if the water is all the way up since it's kind of like a pressure system so you don't have to pump as much to get the water out if the water in the bag is completely full. Then once the bag is full of water you put the cap on and then you have to connect the gray connector that's on the Peristine pump into the cap on the water bag. So the gray connector goes with the gray cap. And it's the same thing when you have to connect the blue connector on the pump system to the blue input on the catheter. Once everything is connected to one another, you can start to lubricate the catheter. And it is self-lubricating, so you don't need any extra lubrication. However, to lubricate the catheter, you do need to get it wet. So to do that, you just open up the packaging and you put enough water into the little tiny pouch that you've made to cover the bottom half. It usually takes about 10 seconds to lubricate the catheter in the water, and if you're unsure about if it's lubricated or not, you can actually dump out the water that you put into the little pouch, and then you can feel it with your hand through the bag, um, and it should feel slippery. Once the catheter is inserted, you can actually pump it up up to four times to make sure the catheter stays in place while the water goes in. Once you pump all the water in that your doctor told you to, and mine was 600 to 800 milliliters, um, you should probably just leave it in there for a few minutes so it can start to break down and dissolve whatever is in there. Once you deflate the balloon, it should probably take around five minutes for all the water to come out, and then you can just swipe up and be done. If you're still scared that some more water may come out afterwards, you can actually just jump right into the shower afterwards and do your usual shower routine, and if anything happens, it's okay because you're already in the shower. So I'm really sorry if I sounded robotic throughout this video, but I'm just really tired and the fire alarm keeps going off, um, so it's just really stressful, but I still wanted to put this video out there because 
personally, I'm just really um, curious what other people do for their bell program because I can't really see a lot of people having success with manual evacuation. Um, it really just didn't work out for me. So I'm curious what other people do, but um, I'm also going to make a separate video about how I use the Peristine and personal tricks that I found that work better for me and then things that I don't really like, um, just stuff like that, because I didn't want this video to be too long and I really just don't feel like it, honestly. But if you are interested for that, I guess subscribe um, and bye. Oh, but uh, don't sneeze. Ah.